But the task is harder than you imagine When you were called to lend a helping hand It might look bad and grim from where you're standing But don't give up, look around, take a stand Get on the boat, better days are coming the storm is easy, the calm is at hand. Leave your journey in the hands of the captain. Cause you know he might just have a better plan. The road ahead may be dark and barren. Fear and doubt may be your only guide. Focused on the horizon There are better ways To feel the hand of God Get on the boat Better days are in coming The storm is easy The calm is at hand Hello, welcome to worship here at Lima United Methodist Church I'm Pastor Karen Bartkowski and I'm so glad that you joined us for worship today on this first Sunday in August. I don't think any of us can believe it's August already. Um, but here at Lima, the first week of the month means that there's a new memory verse. So our memory verse for the month of August comes from Romans chapter 12, verse 17. And it says this, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. But take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. Romans 12, 17. As we prepare for worship, let's listen to our key verse of the day. It comes from Psalm 62, verse 8. And it says this, Trust in God at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before the Holy One. God is a refuge for us. As we prepare for worship, let's take some deep breaths, breathing in the love of God and breathing out our praise in and out. And one more time. Enjoy this worship of our God. Good morning, I'm Mike Christinger. Thanks for joining us today for worship. Please join me in the opening prayer. We come to you, O oh God, eager to be refreshed by song, by word, and by the presence of the Holy Spirit in this gathered community. Come to us, we pray, not just to comfort, but also to challenge us to better lives, to move us toward your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today's scripture lesson is from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 13. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. In our scripture lesson today, Paul gives us his 10 commandments of Christian community. Number one, love must be sincere. Or as Eugene Peterson put it in his message translation, love from the center of who you are, don't fake it. Number two, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, Three, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Number four, honor one another above yourselves. Number five, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Number six, be joyful in hope. Seven, patient in affliction. Eight, faithful in prayer. Number nine, share with God's people who are in need. And number 10, practice hospitality. Our scripture passage today reminds me of the Nike athletic wear advertising campaign, just do it. 
In the first eight chapters, the first eight verses of chapter 12, which we studied back in June, Paul gives instructions for how unique individual Christians should live out their unique individual gifts. But now he shifts gears and offers some generalized instructions for everyone. These are, every, these are things every Christian should just do. Easy, right? <laughs> not for me. I got stuck on number one, loving from the center of who I am and not faking it. How are we supposed to love someone when what might be first and foremost on our minds is that we're angry with them, or we've been hurt by them, or we disagree with them on an important issue? If you ask me, sometimes it's a pretty big accomplishment just to be polite, to be loving in a fake kind of way. Love one another for real, all the time, no matter what. These are not Ten Commandments that lend themselves to a simple slogan like, just do it. But perhaps the genius behind Nike's Just Do It campaign is that those simple words inspired people to do things that are not simple. Nike launched their Just Do It campaign back in 1988, and one of the first television spots they created featured an 80-year-old man named Walt Stack, who runs 17 miles every day. The ad showed Walt running across the Golden Gate Bridge. He said, I run 17 miles every morning. People ask me how I keep my teeth from chattering in the wintertime. I leave them in my locker. He said, people ask me, how do you keep your teeth from chattering in the wintertime? After a little pause, Walt says, I leave them in my locker. <laughs> so cute, but inspiring too. The Just Do It campaign was incredibly successful for Nike, helping them more than double their market share in 10 years. And the success of this campaign comes down to one word, feelings. <laughs> Nike coupled a brief rational command, just do it, with stories of passion and joy and pride and hope. Embedded in every Just Do It message was a deeper message designed to help people feel hopeful or confident or curious or connected. While there don't seem to be many emotions in our scripture lesson today, Paul gives us some very straightforward, rational instructions. Finally, something out of this letter to the Romans that is right to the point. But it seems to me something is missing. We know Paul's spiritual pathway is intellectual, but in your experience, is it possible to love well to keep all 10 of those commandments by thinking we can or willing ourselves to? Even Paul had to admit he wasn't able to do the good he wanted to do, and he found himself doing the bad things he didn't want to do. Something besides thought and will is needed. And I think that something else is a biblical practice called lament. To get in touch with our own painful feelings. Feelings, <laughs> yes, feelings. For some reason, feelings have gotten kind of a bad rap among Christians over the years. But in the Bible, God expresses a wide range of emotions. God shows anger, frustration, remorse, sadness, jealousy, as well as pride and joy. As people created in God's image, we are created to have feelings. Emotions are an important part of what makes life so rich. People like David, Job, Jeremiah, even Jesus express a wide range of emotions in the scriptures. Acknowledging and expressing our feelings is truly a spiritual act. We cannot be in communion with God or with others without being in touch with ourselves. Our feelings are a pathway to God. The problem is feelings can be hard to talk about. I like to group them into five broad categories, mad, sad, glad, hurt, and scared. The glad part we don't usually have too much trouble with, but the mad, sad, hurt, and scared, these are often more difficult feelings to name. They're cousins, shame, guilt, 
jealousy, and loneliness are also hard. Now you might be saying, so some feelings are hard to talk about. What's the big deal? No one wants to talk about feelings anyway. But it is a big deal because over time, unattended to feelings can block our ability to love God and others. We will not be able to keep Paul's 10 commandments of Christian community unless we are in communion with our own feelings. Recently, I watched a helpful video about feelings by Peter and Jerry Scazzaro, a husband and wife team from New York City who started a ministry called Emotionally Healthy Discipleship. They used the image of a cruet of oil and vinegar to show how negative emotions like shame, fear, and anger block our ability to experience peace and joy and creativity and energy and love. If you pour oil and vinegar in a cruet, the oil will naturally float to the top. Maybe our oil doesn't have any cholesterol, but still we know too much oil in our diets will clog our hearts. That is true of our physical hearts as well as our spiritual hearts. Even if we refuse to talk about them, difficult emotions like anger, sadness, stress, and shame will find a way to rise to the surface and influence our ability to live well. This week, Phil and I watched several hours of Olympic coverage, too many to count. I love it when athletes have their very best performance at the Olympics. And it's always disappointing when, for a variety of reasons, things just don't come together and the athlete does not perform as well as they'd hoped. I am no expert in sports psychology, but I can see how that happens. Difficult emotions like stress, pressure, anger, and fear block our ability to do our very best work. It was so sad to see Simone Biles pull out of competition. But when I think about the possible difficult emotions she was wrestling with, whether it was, whether it was a stress of being called GOAT, greatest of all time, unresolved anger about the sexual abuse within USA Gymnastics, loneliness with not having her family nearby, whatever it was, we can easily see how that could keep even an elite athlete from being able to perform at their best. Simone Biles realized she simply could not just do it. She needed to take time to attend to her emotions first. In our scripture lesson today, Paul is giving us his 10 commandments for Christian community because he wants to see the church function at its best. He wants the church to have the best possible witness to reform at an elite level, a level that will attract the attention of unchurched people in the world. But what he does not tell us is that one of the key elements to being able to perform at our best is to pay attention to our feelings. My guess is he doesn't mention it because the practice of lament was an important regular part of religious practice in his day. But that's not true in our day. Sometimes I worry that the church is a place where we pressure people to put on their Sunday best, not just in terms of clothing, but in terms of a smile on their face. But church should be a place where we can be honest about our feelings, where we can get support in naming the difficult ones, where we can learn to live from the center of who we are and not have to fake it. Psalm 62, 8 says, Trust in God at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to God, for God is our refuge. The key to loving from the center of who we are and not having to fake it is being able to be honest with God about how we are feeling. When I read over Paul's list in this passage, I know in the last year I have wanted to say, but I don't feel like it to almost every single one of those top 10 commandments for Christian community. My guess is you felt that way over the course of this past year too. Confusion, isolation, sadness, and stress have blocked our ability to experience positive feelings like peace, joy, love, creativity, and energy. But what might happen if every time we wanted to say, I don't feel like it, Lord, we saw that as an opportunity, as a spiritual pathway. God speaks to us through the scriptures, but God also speaks to us through our feelings. This is not to say we should go and do whatever we feel like. No, not at all. But our feelings are a type of guidance system 
a way to tune in and hear what is happening in our emotional inner world. And when we stop and get quiet and tune in to our authentic self, we can be sure that the Holy Spirit who dwells in us will meet us there. For instance, let's say there is a member of the community I am having trouble honoring because they have hurt me. Maybe it's a family member with opposing political views or a neighbor with differing views on vaccination or a fellow United Methodist who doesn't share my desire for full inclusion in our denomination. Conversation turned to debate, turned to hurt feelings. Have you been there? <laughs> Does God want us to ignore that problem and pretend our hurt feelings don't exist? No, because there is no such thing as truly ignoring hurt feelings. They are still there. And as much as I think I might have buried them, like the oil, they will rise to the surface eventually and block my joy. A much better option would be to say, Lord, how are you coming to me in these feelings of hurt and anger? How are you coming to me in these feelings of fear and distrust? Tell God what is going on in you. Be open to God's presence coming to you through your emotions. And then let God redeem those hard feelings so you can flourish. I poured some canola oil and red wine vinegar into this measuring cup three days ago just to be sure if it was really true that the vinegar would sink to the bottom and the oil would rise to the top. As you can see, not only does the oil rise to the surface, it stays there. Negative emotions have a way of accumulating within us and they block our ability to experience the more pleasurable emotions underneath. These negative emotions they do not go away on their own, nor are they benign. They get expressed in the form of addictions, sarcasm, apathy, self-sabotaging behaviors. We all want to be able to love well. I'm sure in theory we are all in complete agreement with Paul's top 10 commandments for Christian community. That's the kind of church culture we want. But that won't be accomplished by a just do it mindset. Just like Nike's advertising campaign, we will have to add an emotional component if we want to make progress. This summer, we have been talking about seven different spiritual pathways and how different people connect in different ways to God. But our emotions are a pathway that is common, shared by every person and important to every person. Each of us must find a way or a menu of ways that help us process our difficult emotions. Let me give you two options to consider today. Almost 1600 years ago, St. Augustine said, it is solved by walking. <laughs> he prayed as he walked and felt all of his burdens and his questions finally come to a conclusion or come to a resolution by walking. You might try taking a walk with God, talking to God on the way out, and listening to God on the way home. Another idea is to solve things by writing. Set your timer for two minutes and write down everything you can think of that is making you mad. Hit repeat on your timer and write down everything you can think of that's making you sad. Repeat this with the other motions. So mad, sad, glad, hurt, scared. 10 minutes, write as if you are talking to God Ask God, how are you coming to me in these feelings? Whether by walking or writing or some other method, pour out your heart to God once or twice a week. See if lament helps unclog your inner world so you can more easily tap into the positive and pleasurable emotions like love, joy, energy, and peace. If the thought of talking to God about emotions scares you too much. Just think about Walt Stack, the 80-year-old man who runs 17 miles every day. In the winter, instead of worrying about his teeth chattering in the cold, he just leaves them in his locker. Don't be afraid to look for God in your difficult emotions. Just do it, and then watch and see what God does with that. Amen. 
this affirmation of our faith comes from the book of Romans. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Psalm 62, 8 says, Trust in God at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to God, for God is our refuge. The key to loving from the center of ourselves and not faking it <laughs> is being honest with God about how we are feeling. Mad, sad, glad, hurt, scared. Find a way to share your feelings with God and process your difficult emotions so you might experience more of the love, joy, peace, creativity, and energy that God wants for all of us. Amen. Your love, oh Lord, reaches to the heaven. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. Your righteousness like the mighty mountain. Your justice flows like the ocean's tide. My high voice and the worship you, my King, and I will find my high strength in the shadow of your wings. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heaven. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. 